Hey, let me start with this question. How many of you are here today? Say, I'm here if you're here. It's good that you are here. And if you're not physically present in the room, if you're joining us, whether it be on YouTube or church online today, we're glad that you are joining us as well and that you are here today. There's something about being present. There's something about being uh, a part or, or, or being physically present. And isn't it great that we have the ability to be together, to be able to come together as a body of Christ and worship God together and, and, and to be able to receive from him. There's, there's so much good that comes from being able to be together. We, we have the ability as followers of Jesus to be able to just worship our, our King and our Savior, to allow the Spirit of God to move among us, the same Spirit that raised God from the dead and raised Jesus from the grave. That's an incredible thing that we get to experience together today. And I'm glad that you chose to be here. And, and again, there's something special, there's something powerful about being together in the moment and, and being able to receive what God has for us. And, and the reason that I say this and the reason that I'm so thankful that you're here today is because unfortunately, unfortunately, some of you won't be here for long. And what I mean by that is not physically, okay? What I mean is mentally or emotionally, statistics say that you will check out at some point during this message, <laughs> that you will not continue to be engaged. Some of you may get a text message in the middle of the message and you will respond to that test message and your mind will go to whatever is going on, whatever you know needs to be done there. Some of you, God forbid, will initiate a text <laughs> message in the middle of my message. Others may, you know, have to check their Instagram feed to find out what has been going on in the last 11 minutes that you've missed. Because you have to stay engaged and know what is going on. Others of you may be thinking about the things that you have to do today. Or like me, many of you may be thinking about the food that we're going to be partaking of here in just a little bit in Thanksgiving around the world. What an awesome thing. But again, whatever it is, many of us, statistics say, may be not here at some point in time in this time that we have together, just disengaged, mind somewhere else. Unfortunately, that is just the, the world we live in and the truth, the reality of things. We've got so many things that distract, right? So many things that, that pull us away. Maybe it's, maybe it's bills that need to be paid. Maybe it's uh, things that need to get done. Maybe it's kids to have to round up or, or stuff that needs to get done before the workday starts uh, tomorrow, I, I don't know what it might be, but ten, there, there's this tendency to, to be pulled away to so many other things. And, and as we get started today, I want to I wanna, I wanna go to a, a passage in Scripture that talks about Jesus and, and his very first miracle that he did, that he was engaged in, um, and... I, I want us to, to focus on something that, that is, is unique in this passage of Scripture, and I love it, and it just kind of jumped out to me, and, and I hope that it will challenge all of us to be present in the moment. And again, I'm glad that you're here. In John chapter 2, there's a story of Jesus, and he is going, he's been invited to a wedding, a celebration of two people that are, that are getting married. What an awesome time. And he goes and he, he is at this, this wedding. And while he's at this wedding, uh, an unfortunate circumstance, really an embarrassing situation takes place. They run out of wine. 
And this would be extremely embarrassing during that time. And they, they, they find out, and Jesus' his own mother comes to him and says, listen, do something. They, they're, they're running out of wine. Can you just do something? And doesn't even wait really for a response. She just tells the servants, do whatever he says. And so Jesus tells them, he says, listen, go and get, go and get these these." jar these big vessels now these wouldn't be just normal jars that we might think these are huge that's like 20 to 30 gallons each and he says fill them with water and so the servants obey they fill it with water and then he tells them now take a serving out and take it to the master of the banquet and that's where we pick up the story in John chapter 2 starting in verse 8 says this they did so, the servants did what Jesus asked, and the master of the banquet tasted the water that had been turned into wine. He did not realize where it had come from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew what had taken place. Then he called the bridegroom aside after he had tasted, and he said this, everyone brings out the choice wine first, and then the cheaper wine after the guests have had too much to drink. After they didn't really care what it tasted like at that point, right? And he says, and, and, and I've always thought that this not, last next line, I've always thought it said, but you save the best till last. But notice, that's not what it says at all. Here's what it says. It says, but you have saved the best until now. You save the best until right now. The, the title of today's message is Our Best Days Are Here Right Now. Our best days are here. Amen. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Father, in Jesus' name, God, I just thank you for your word. I pray that it would be powerful to us. God, I pray that we would engage in it. God, that we would be present in what you are wanting to do in this time where your presence wants to move in a powerful way, where you want to speak to our hearts. God, maybe we'd be quick to engage, God, and not get distracted in any way, but God, maybe we'd be quick to receive all that you want to speak to us in this time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. We're in a series called A Better Way. And basically, we're talking about not necessarily the, the principles and the values that, that we see in Scripture. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. We know about the truths of God's word. But we often forget that also Jesus was the perfect example of the way that we need to live each and every day. He shows us a better way, the way to live our life. And one of the most striking qualities about Jesus is that he had this incredible ability to live in the moment, to be present and engage with people in the moment. He had this way to just be here with whatever was going on, with the people that were around him. I like to say it this way, he had an undivided attention in the moment. He was focused on what was going on and with the people that he was engaging with. Let me show you what I mean. There's back-to-back -back stories in the book of Luke that we're going we're gonna to pull out. The end of chapter 18 of Luke and the beginning of chapter 19 show two stories that, that we're going we're gonna to look at that just shows how Jesus had this uncanny ability to be able to be in the moment and, and engage with the people that were there. It says in, at the end of chapter 18 that Jesus is walking into Jericho. Okay, Jericho was just like the stories we heard of. If you were in Sunday school as a kid and know the stories of Jericho in the Old Testament when Joshua walked around seven times and the walls come crumbling down, right? Well, it had been rebuilt, a rebuilt city, beautiful place that Jesus was walking into. And as he's walking through the city, it said large crowds were gathered all around him. And they were waiting to see what Jesus would do. And as he's walking through town and, and the people are gathered around his disciples were kind of clearing a path, going out in front of him and kind of clearing the way. And as he's walking, a, a blind man was sitting on the side of the road and he hears that Jesus is coming. 
His name's Blind Bartimaeus. And he begins to yell out, Jesus, Son of God, have mercy on me. And as his disciples were going ahead of him, they hear this guy shouting. They're like, Shh, be quiet. Quit yelling at, at Jesus. What are you doing? You know, quit making a scene. And they're telling him to be quiet. But he screamed all the louder, Scripture says. Jesus, Son of God, have mercy on me. And Jesus, despite what everybody else was saying, despite the people that were trying to hush and shush him and tell him to be quiet, he turns and goes over to blind Bartimaeus. And he says, what would you like for me to do for you? He engages with this man. People, someone that, that many others would just walk by and not pay attention to. He engages with Bartimaeus and he says, what is it that you want me to do for you? And Bartimaeus says, I would love to have, to be able to see, to have my sight restored. And Jesus says, according to your faith, be healed. He does an incredible miracle. And this guy sees for the first time, begins to jump up and down and follow Jesus and declare his praises. And many people, it says, begin to worship God because of that miracle. Now, that's incredible, right? That's who Jesus is. He does miraculous things, and that's awesome. That's the first thing that we see here. He engages and he does a miracle. But here's the second thing, is that he spends time with someone who society would say he, he isn't worthy of our time. He is just someone who's sitting off to the side. We don't need to speak. You hush. You be quiet. You just sit here. Maybe you'll get some, some change on the side or whatever if we feel sorry for you. But you don't need to call on the Savior. You don't need to make a big ruckus here. But Jesus found time to spend with Bartimaeus. He found time to, to engage in the moment with someone who was in need. And I love this because even when we might feel like we're not deserving, we're not worthy, we're not, uh, we're not capable of really receiving what God may want, he loves us anyway. Even in our mess, even in our mistakes, he loves us anyway. And he cares about each and every one of us. Now, the very next story Luke chapter 19, it says he's, again, walking through Jericho. And this, this portion of Scripture says that he's actually on his way somewhere else. So he's traveling through Jericho. So he's not staying in Jericho. He's on his way out of town, okay? So he's passing through. And in Luke 19, here's what it says, verse 1. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. Now, Jesus, again, he's, he's passing through. He's on his way through. He had already been stopped by a blind beggar, right, and spent time with this guy. Now he's going through, and he runs into a guy by the name of Zacchaeus. And he was a rich tax collector, okay? Now, let me tell you a little bit about Zacchaeus, okay? Now, Zacchaeus was a wee little man, and a wee little man was he. <laughs> he climbed up in a sycamore tree to see what he could see. If you ever went to Sunday school, you know that. You drank the Kool-Aid, and you know that story, okay? So Zacchaeus, he engages with Jesus, and Jesus engages with him. In fact, is Jesus takes time not only with the lowly, the poor, he, spend, he, he takes time with the wealthy as well, right? And so not only does he spend time with the down and out, he spends time with the out, up and out. He has time for each and every one. And he, he, he says to Zacchaeus, listen, I, I, I'm coming to your house for lunch, I, I'm gonna. I, he invites himself over to Zacchaeus's house. Now, this this would have been unheard of. Really, you should have steered clear of these kind of people because these were not good people. 
uh, considered in that time because tax collectors, they would have not just charged the amount of tax that they were supposed to charge, they would charge a little bit more so that they could have the extra. And so he was probably a, a corrupt individual and many would have recognized that and they would have been shocked that Jesus was going to his house to spend time with him, to eat lunch with him. But here's what happens is, while he's at Jesus' house, Zacchaeus says, listen, I, I, I have done wrong, I've messed up, I know that I've probably cheated people, but whatever I've done, I, I, I repent of that, and if I have cheated anyone, I'll give back to them four times what I've taken from them. He has this moment where he's just like, I, I, I repent of what I've done, Jesus, and I want to make it Right, And Jesus says to him, today salvation has come to this house. Incredible, incredible. And, and, and this would, again, would be shocking to those that would hear this. But Jesus, he takes time with this corrupt tax collector and, and, and is able to engage with him and see him come to know Jesus and be a follower of him. Here's the deal. Jesus was always present in the moment. He always had time to spend with whoever it might be, those that were in need. He was present in the moment. You know what? I want to be like that. I want to be present and engaged in the moment. I want to be able to know what, what, what is going on and be able to, to, to speak with, with people, whether it's, it's loved ones, whether it's my family, whether it's it, those that, that are in the church, that are come, whatever. I, I have this tendency, and I've, I've shared this before, that, that, you know, with so many things going on, so many things to do, if, if I get in a conversation and, and I feel like it's, it's, it's taken a while or whatever, you know, I can, I can tend to, you know, start looking elsewhere and what's the next conversation and finish sentences for people. I know none of you ever do anything like that, but you know what I'm saying? And, and what happens is we tend to miss those moments. And, and, and God has really challenged me in, 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 the, in the last weeks and months, listen, we need to be present in the moment. That's exactly the way Jesus was. He was present in the moment, and not just in the happy moments, right? Not just in the moments we, we enjoy and want to, to, to be engaged in when everything is good and you're celebrating something awesome or whatever. It's easy to be engaged in those moments, but also in the, the annoying moments, right? I can remember when we had little kids, okay? My kids are all teenagers and up now, but w when we had little kids and, and there was diapers everywhere, just kind of the smell of diaper in the house. You know what I'm talking about? And, and you know, you change in diapers. I, I changed diapers, you know? I mean, I didn't, I didn't actually change diapers. I just said, hey, babe, you gotta do this diaper. You gotta change the diaper. That, that was my changing diapers. But anyway, um, it, it, just kidding. I actually did change some diapers. But um, I, I remember that time, and I remember coming, you know, and stubbing my toe on toys laying around everywhere all the time. And I'm thinking, when are we going to get out of this stage of little kids and, you know, and all the things and have fresh air in the house for a little while and stuff? And then, you know, now... I've got older kids and they're teenagers and it's a whole different deal. And I can remember thinking, I can't wait till we get to that age. And now I'm thinking, man, I just wish that they were little again, you know? And, and we wouldn't have to have some of these really hard conversations that we have to have and, and stuff. Like that. It, it just was so much simpler when, when they were little, you know, and you just did everything for them. You didn't have to worry about them getting in. It just, it was, it, here, here's, here's what I'm trying to say is that sometimes we wish for, for, for things to get here that, that, and we miss out, we miss out on what we have in the moment. Here's what I would challenge us with. We need to stop complaining today about moments you'll miss tomorrow. We need to be here. Let me ask, are you still here this morning? Are you with me? Still out there? Listen. The statistical odds are I've probably lost some of you. We get distracted by a lot of things. We get distracted. 
And it's easy to be distracted. Uh, Harvard did a study, and they said that 47% of the time, the mind isn't where your feet are. 40, almost half the time, your mind is somewhere else other than where you are right now. You know, our mind goes to all kinds of crazy things. The, you know, the stupid cat video that somebody sent you or the, you know, the political thing, the scandal, the this, the that, all the different things that are coming across. We're, we're constantly thinking about all these different things. And here's the thing. With, with, with our phone that we have and is, is ever present with us, it's easy more easy today, I feel like, than ever before, to get distracted, to find so many things that pull us away, right? Here's what, here's what it, uh, a study said, that the average so, uh, cell phone user touches their phones 2,617 times a day. They touch their phone that many times a day. I mean, that's a lot of distractions in a day, Right? A lot of distractions. That, that many times we're, we're touching our phone. But here's the thing. Here, we have a church full of not just average people, but exceptional people, overachievers. Here's what the study said. The top 10% of people, those that are extreme users, the top 10% touch their phones more than 5,400 times a day. Can I just say, that's gross. I mean, <laughs> clean that thing. My gosh. It, it just, we use our phone so much, right? How many distractions is that? And here's the thing. When we're not on our phones, we're, we're playing games, mind games. Like, I, I play the, the game, it, 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 if not when, then, right? The when, then game. You know what I'm talking about? When, when this happens, then, then I'll be able to do this. When, when I get to high school, if I could just get to high school, then things would be great. Or when I'm a freshman, if I, would just, if I was just a, a senior, then everything would be great. Or when I get out of high school and I'm going to college, everything would be great. And when I'm out of college, and then when I'm able to pay off the college loans, and then when I get a real job, then things would be great. And then when I get married, everything will be great. Or when we have kids or when our kids are out of diapers or when our kids are grown and they're gone or when I'm in diapers and then everything will be great. You know, I don't know. Whatever it is, we tend to think when, then, right? The when, then game. And we go through life wishing away the current moment and hoping for something better in the future. Here's what I would say. Don't miss what you have now pursuing what you want later. It's the win-then game. If it's not the win-then game, it's the what-if game. I do this as well. What if? What if this were to happen? Or what if that? What if I, I, I don't pass this test? Or what if I, you know, get a bad grade here? Or what if I, you know, I, I don't get that promotion? Or what if I can't get that good job? Or what if I can't get in the, the right school? Or what if things don't go the way I want it to in this relationship? Or whatever it might be, what if? Worried about the economy, worried about... The, the COVID or can I afford this house or what about that, this, this spouse and the things that are going on there? What if? Here's, here's what we've got to challenge ourselves with again is it's, it's in the moment that we can be present. And if we're in the moment and we trust God in the moment, then anything that comes our way, we can work through. Amen? Here's what... Jesus said in Matthew 6, 34, Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. There's enough to worry about tomorrow. Don't worry about the things in the future. Let's stay present. Let's stay rooted in what is going on right now. It's not like Jesus said don't plan. It's not like you can't plan for the future. It's not that. It's just we shouldn't worry so much about what is going on in the future. Are you still here? Still out there? Here, here's the challenge. The only way, the only way that we can stay present, stay engaged in the moment is if we surrender the past that we can't change and then trust God with the future that we can't control. We got to 
trust God in the moment, right? We got to give it to God. We surrender the past because we can't do anything about it anyway. We got to give that over to him. And then we've got to trust God that he's taking care of the future. Amen? That's the challenge. Amen? Are you out there? Amen? We got to trust God with you. It takes faith. It takes faith. Here's what James chapter 4 says. Come now, you who say, today or tomorrow we will go into such and such a, play, a town and spend a year there and trade and make a profit. Yet you do not know what tomorrow will bring. What is your life? For you are a mist that appears for a little time and then vanishes. We're only here for a little while, Scripture says. Uh, we have one of these little... I don't even know what it is. It's just this little round thing that you put water in and then some drops of like smelly good stuff, you know? And then it, it, this, this mist comes out of the top of it, right? And it comes out for about that far that you can see, right? You see it puffing out of there, you know, and in this stream of mist that's coming out. And you might be way over across the room and you can smell it. Right? But all you can see is this, just this, about this much that's coming out of the top of this, this mister. Right? And, and that's our life. It, it, it's, it's here today, and it's gone very, very soon in the grand scheme of things, in the, in the, in the grand scheme of, of life and, and, and all the time that we have in this. It's not very long in comparison. And, and, and God's saying here, listen, listen. Your life is, is a mist in comparison. And so what, what's the point? It's, listen, be present in the moments. Be, pre be engaged in the moments. Be here to know what's really going on. It's like an hourglass. You know an hourglass where the sand is constantly following through and you, can't, you don't know how much time is left. You see the sand as it begins to, to fall out and just begin, continues to fall and you can see it slowly getting less and less and you, you don't know how much time is left there but you know eventually it's going to run out. And here's the deal. We only have so long. And I don't, I don't fear death. I, I know that like Paul said, to be absent from this flesh is to be present with the Lord, right? I, it's not about fearing that. It's, it, it is about, though, realizing that there is only so much time on this earth. And we should be present and engaged in the moment. The most important times, the, series, the, the, the things that matter most. I was at a football game on Friday night freezing my tail end off in the cold as... Our, our, our football team played for the quarterfinals. And I, I'm sad to say they didn't win that game, but they had an incredible season. Can we give it up for our Green Valley Eagle? They did an outstanding job this year. So thankful that we had the ability to be able to go watch. It was an awesome, it was an awesome season. But the reason that I was there is because I had a son playing. And the reason I was there and was so engaged is because I was excited for him. I was excited about what he was doing and his play. And afterwards, coming home and being sad, but being able to just kind of talk through the season and the, and, and the game and all that kind of stuff, it's, it's hard. But th those are the moments that, that matter. Those are the moments that re you remember. Those are the moments that mean the most. And it would be easy just to, oh, well, lost and just go and, 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 and not think a, a second again about, about it. But... Being engaged and, and, and recognizing, knowing, and, and taking time with the people that matter most in life, that's what's important. That's what makes a difference. That's the legacy that we leave behind. Amen? Being present in the moment. I love what David says in the Psalms. This is the day that the Lord has made. I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it. I'm not going to... Think about the future and the, the next days. It doesn't say these are the days that the Lord has made. It says this is the day. This is the day the Lord has made. I'm going to rejoice and be glad in this day. Why is he saying that? Because every single day we ought to be, we ought to be cognizant of the fact that God has given us this day. 
and I'm going to rejoice. I'm going to be glad in this day. I'm going to make the most of this day. Here's, here's what we need to know. Here's what we can't do. Let me give you three things that we can't do. You can't be happy where you are not. You can't serve Jesus where you are not. And you can't love people where you are not. We can't do those things, right? But we can do those things where we are, where we're present, where we recognize I'm here in the moment. And I can do these things right here. I can do these things that Jesus wants and asks of us to do when I'm here. Be in the moments. Be present in the moments. Be engaged in the moments with your family members, with your spouse, with that coworker who's hurting the loss that he just went through. I don't know what it might be, but God gives us those opportunities to be present and to be engaged and to to be able to speak a kind word, a, 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 an encouraging word. Or maybe just to be present, just to be there, just to sit there and hold someone who's hurting. Place a hand and pray for someone who is in need. I, I don't know what it might be, but listen, when we're engaged in the moment, we can do these things. We can't do it when we're not there. Whether it's emotionally not there or mentally not there, We need to be engaged in the moment. Don't miss what you have now pursuing what you want later. To be fair, it's easy to get distracted. We can become preoccupied with all kinds of things in our life, right? Easily distracted. And listen, nobody could have been more distracted than Jesus was when he was hanging on the cross, right? He could have been distracted totally self-absorbed with all the pain and the suffering of the world that he was taking on himself. Yet there was somebody hanging beside him who engaged Jesus in the midst of his greatest agony and most suffering. And he says, listen, remember me. He has this moment of saying, God, forgive me. He probably bared his soul. Listen, I, I don't deserve it, but could you remember me when you enter into your glory? And Jesus turns to him and says, today you'll be with me in paradise. Could have blown him off. Too much suffering, too much going on. I've got all the world i got to think about right now. I can't think about just one. But instead, he does. He turns and he is present in the moment, in the midst of all that he still is present in the moment if he can do that I think we can find time and to challenge ourselves, encourage ourselves, begin to make it a habit in our life to be present in the times that matter most to be engaged to spend time doing what matters most with those that we care about most we can't serve Jesus where we're not we can't love people where we're not we can't be happy where we're not but we can choose to be get engaged in the moment why because our best days are here